Hello, uh, this video is an introduction to important topics uh, in chapter 10 and the main purpose of this video is to show you the close connection between multiple linear regression and design and analysis of experiments uh, not least from a software perspective to understand how the software will work to give you your model. Uh, in this video I will give you a short introduction to multiple linear regression we will look at the method of least squares uh, and we will move on to linear algebra notation to show you how the software actually works. I will also give you some self-study topics uh, in the chapter which I think are, are important for you to understand um, well important uh, aspects of the linear regression approach to analyzing uh, the designs. Okay, so regression analysis, uh, it can be described as a, an um, umbrella term for a general type of models and methods with a variety of applications in empirical sciences and technology. It is often used to determine what we, we can say as a best relationship between a Y variable, a response, or we can call it a dependent variable sometimes, uh, between that and one or many x variables or independent variables predictors or factors from this relationship we want to draw conclusions about how the var variables the x variables affect y and we want to make predictions with a given degree of certainty or uncertainty um, let's look at a, a familiar example uh, this is a regression model assumption for a two-level factorial design with two factors and one interaction term. The linear part in terms of linear regression is uh, based on the fact that y uh, is a linear function of, of the beta coefficients. It has nothing to do with the underlying response surface that's created or, or um, uh, in such a way. It's, it's only a matter of the function being linear in terms of the beta coefficients. And these beta coefficients are typically estimated by the method of least squares. Now in this model assumption you have y here, which is the response. You have beta 0, which is the intercept. And let's say beta 1 for the first factor, beta 2 uh, describes the relationship with the second factor, and beta 1 to the, the relationship with the interaction term. We have the residual uh, here. And we have this um, acronym for describing the assumption assumptions uh, on the residual terms. I'll get I'll get back to the, this on next next slide. And we also assume in two-level factorial designs we assume that x i, which is x one here, for example, it takes on the value minus one if the factor is at its low level, and plus one if the factor is at its high level. The model assumption includes this uh, familiar assumption on the residual terms. This means that we assume that the residuals are normally distributed, that they have expected value zero, uh, constant variance, uh, sigma squared, and that they are independent random variables. And these assumptions are checked through residual analysis. Okay, in this animation I'll try to explain how the method of least squares work with a, a simple example. So we have, in this case, the response y here and we have a relationship potentially with one predictor or one x variable, x1. Now, <clears throat> first assume that we have the following observations on x1 and y. So in this case, for this recorded value of x1, we have the following response. Uh, for this x1 value, we have this, this response, and so on. Now assume that we try to fit the following linear regression model. Uh, so we have y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1. So we have this fitted line, in this case, <coughs> as the model. Now we can see that the model is, will not be exactly the same as the observed values, so we will have errors or residuals uh, in terms of these distances. 
And we can call them epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and so on. These are the estimated residuals based on the model we have estimated. Uh, the method of least squares, it means that we choose we choose these beta coefficients beta 0 and beta 1 in such a way uh, that the sum of all quadratic distances are minimized. So we will try to minimize this sum of quadratic distances or quadratic uh, residuals. Okay, so to understand how this method of least squares works in most or in all softwares I'm fam familiar with at least, we need to move to matrix notation. Uh, we also need some linear algebra operations, uh, be familiar with them to understand the formulas, such as the transpose of a matrix and the inverse of a matrix. Um, Note that the transpose of a matrix like this can be written like this with a T or with this symbol, as in your course book, I believe. So <clears throat> this is the same thing, which means that we, we're looking for the transpose of the matrix. Now stop the video and try to remember how you get the transpose of this matrix, this 351, 248, minus 1, 0, 6. And also what is the inverse of a matrix? Okay, so let's see the answer for the transpose of a matrix. Uh, it means that the rows will become columns in the transpose matrix and vice versa. So in this case, the first row, 3, 5, 1, becomes the first column in the transpose matrix, 3, 5, 1. Or 3, 2, minus 1, which is the first column of the original matrix, becomes the first row of the transpose matrix. So that's not that difficult uh, to remember. Uh, inverse of a matrix is usually a little bit more tricky uh, to remember from the linear algebra course. Uh, anyway, uh, the inverse of a square matrix, uh, matrix A, is the matrix A minus 1, such that if we multiply these together, we get the identity matrix. Uh, the identity matrix, we have 1s on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And also remember that not all matrices are invertible. So the matrix needs first to be a square matrix with equal number of rows and columns. And the determinant of A cannot be 0 uh, for the matrix to be invertible. So it has to be uh, different from 0. I will not go into more details about the inverse. Uh, and you can check this yourself if you if you if you like with a uh, googling uh, the, the determinant for example and so on. If you if you cannot really remember how this is calculated, um, we'll move on to writing the observations in a regression model in matrix notation. So here you have. Uh, the matrix notation. So y is equal to x beta plus epsilon. This is a column uh, vector. This is also a column vector and these, this is a matrix and a column vector. So if we explain this a little bit more carefully, we have y as a column vector uh, with our response values. So y1, y2, and so on. We have x as the matrix with the levels of our independent factors uh, completed with the first columns of ones. So we can view this as our exper experimental design matrix basically and additionally the first column with only ones and this column is part of it because we want to make sure that every observation um, is uh, um, has beta zero as part of it times 1. And beta is a column vector with the regression coefficients and then we have a column vector with the errors of the residuals. Okay. Now just to take a look at the first observation for example uh, y1 here we get this from multiplying beta 0 with 1, beta 1 times x11 and so on, beta k times x1k. 
plus epsilon 1. So this is how we create every response value in this design. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's work a bit to try to create the sum of squared residuals that we need uh, for the method of least squares. Now here if uh, epsilon is this column vector then we can transpose this and get a row vector here and we can multiply them together epsilon t times e and create this sum of squared residuals that we actually need to minimize in the method of least squares. Also note that we can express the residual vector as in this case, epsilon is equal to y minus x beta. We will use this on the next slide. <clears throat> so the least squared or least square estimates of beta, the beta coefficients becomes uh, the beta values, the beta values in this case, that minimizes this sum of, of squared uh, residuals. Mm -hmm. Now, the least squared estimate of the beta coefficients, it can be shown that this is the way you estimate them. Uh, I will not go into much more details about this, but we'll look at this, um, what, what sometimes is called as the hat matrix. So, we have the estimated values on the betas. They are given by x transpose x and the inverse of that times x transpose times y. Uh, and we call this sometimes the hat matrix. I, you'll see this in the book. Now this is also the reason for me to, to, to talk about the transpose, which we need in this case, and the inverse that we need in this case. And also <coughs> uh, you, can, you can somehow try to remember that the x, x transpose x will make this matrix a square matrix with equal number of rows and columns which is very important uh, for it to be invertible let's say okay so and this matrix algebra uh, operation is what the software will use to get you your least squared estimates of the beta values okay uh, Finally, some important self-study topics of chapter 10 in the book. Um, first, uh, what happens when you have a missing response value in a factorial design? I think you should study example 10.3 to see that the factorial design is quite robust against the number of missing values. If the, miss the number of missing values is quite small, let's say one missing value, for example. <clears throat> Another uh, important example is what happens when it is difficult to keep the fat factor settings exactly at the chosen levels or the planned levels. Um, so take a look at example 10.4. Um, uh, it will show you that it, it is better to use the real values than the planned values if, if they are not the same. The resulting regression model will not be very much different uh, from this choice, so it's better to use the, the, the actual values that you have during your experiments, not the ones that you planned for your factor levels. Uh, and in example 10.5, this exemplifies how you can de-analyze interactions uh, through the fold-over technique, which is also very interesting to look at. And that was all for this video. I thank you very much for listening and uh, good luck with your regression uh, analysis and interpreting the, the softwares. Thank you. Bye-bye.